Okay, guys, it's time to test your knowledge of animal noises. Let's see how good you are. Here we go. Number one. Okay. Sorry. Number one. All right, that's an easy one. Elephant. Check. Okay, try number two. Yeah, it's still kind of simple. That is actually a goat. Try your hand at number three. Now it's getting tricky. Now, you might think this is some kind of bird, but in fact, it's a dugong. That's pretty surprising, eh? And even though the weather looks a little bit dubious out there, I say we hit the water and find out just a little bit more about these really cool sea creatures. There's a reason these beautiful animals are also known as sea cows, although they are more closely related to an elephant than dolphins or whales, let alone a cow. As part of his honours degree with the University of Queensland, Giovanni Damiani has spent many hours on the water monitoring these animals. Gio, dugongs are a very cool species. Why have you decided to study them? Uh, mainly because um, like, they haven't been that well studied so far. There's a lot of gaps in the knowledge and yeah. uh, they're a bit mysterious, so uh, it sort of drew me to them. So maybe hopefully you can have your name written in the history books of dugong research. Fingers crossed. <laughs> do you reckon we'll see any today? Uh, yeah, we should do. Um, they're usually around in the same place, so uh, if we, as long as we go to the right place, we should find them. The weather isn't great, it's really windy, so that makes them hard to spot, but okay. we should find them. All right. These eastern banks of Moreton Bay are Giovanni's favourite place to spend the day studying the dugongs. But it seems it's not as easy as just kicking back and watching them swim and eat all day. So tell us about your tools, Gio. How do you study dugong noises? OK, so I have um, two hydrophones that I've got attached to either end of my kayak and I drop in the water. And they're attached to a little amplifier and a recording device that I have sat in my lap. Uh -huh. and. Uh, I just press a button and it goes. <laughs> and then after that, I go back to the computer and upload it on, and I use a special program to analyze all the well, acoustics. What was it like the first time you heard dugong sounds? It was surprising, actually, because uh, I didn't know what they were going to sound, sound like, and uh, they, they sound a lot like birds, so there's nothing like I expected them like, to sound. Like birds? Yeah, like sparrows. <laughs> That's interesting. And you use a kayak. Now, why is that? I use the kayak uh, for a few reasons. Um, mainly because it's a lot quieter, and uh, if you try and record from a, a boat, uh, the sound of the engine is really loud underwater, and it masks the, the sound of the dugong vocalization. So with a kayak, no engine, so it's quieter. But it also means that as they move, I can move with them without disturbing them, and um, hopefully get a lot more natural behaviors and natural recordings from them that way. All right, well, obviously, I can't go on the kayak today, so I'll let you do all the hard work, all right? No problem. <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> So how'd you go out there, Gio? I was all right. Um, it was a bit, bit noisy today, but I managed to hear a few vocalizations in there. Uh-huh. Nice stuff. <laughs> so how long have you been doing it for now? Uh, I've been doing this study for about six months. Six months? Yeah. OK. So uh, what's it leading to? What have you discovered so far? Well, still early days. I have to um, analyze all my data before I can make any real conclusions. But uh, I'm. It seems uh, I'm a bit interested in group size. I, I have a feeling that the bigger herds are vocalizing a lot more mm. than the smaller herds. Um, why, I couldn't say just yet, but yeah. I, that's just a feeling I have. Well, thanks a lot for taking us out, man. It's Thank been you. great. Yeah, no worries. Cheers.